presenter is going to take us even farther out of the boundaries of the classroom. Carolyn Canusio will discuss her concept called photo documentary. Carolyn teaches several <coughs> courses in public health, and the Weigel Information Commons has featured Carolyn's projects on our success stories page, and we often show our visitors the gallery from the Health of Philadelphia Photo Documentation Project. It's received significant attention from WHYY and several other news sources. What I love about the project is the simplicity and the technical ease. There's, you know, there's just careful selection of still photographs, interview quotes, and personal reflections make pro problems that seem in unsurmountable just make them more human. And I think they really connect people across barriers of class and race. So I'm thrilled that Carolyn could come and talk with us today. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I'll try to speak quickly so Very that we fine. can keep us on track. Okay, so I'm a social epidemiologist by training and I saw David Barnes in the room. He's heard, or I saw him come in earlier, hi there. Uh, David has heard me say before that my training in social epidemiology was really an asocial experience or an antisocial experience, possibly. And there were really two, two tools that we were taught to use in social epidemiology. We relied heavily on uh, quantitative data analysis software, and we used word processing packages, and we sat at our desks to try to discern patterns of health and disease in populations. It wasn't why I was drawn to the field. I, I wanted to engage communities and engage questions of why some people in populations suffer a disproportionate burden of disease. So my mission in teaching is to really get back out of the classroom or back away from my desk and go into the world to understand the dynamics of human behavior and the context for health, especially in our cities. So I'm going to talk to you today about why photography helps with this mission. And I'm going to give you basically four imperatives that I uh, see in my research and teaching. Uh, the first is that I want to teach my students how to observe the environments that they think may influence the health of the communities they're interested in. I'm going to talk to you today about one particular project, not the Health of Philadelphia Photo Documentation Project, but a more recent project called A Place to Call Home, which is a collaboration um, among many different community groups but spearheaded by the Mural Arts Program of Philadelphia. And the project was spurred by the observation in the mural arts program that many of the high-risk youth they serve suffer adverse consequences because of housing insecurity, that at the root of many of the problems these youth face um, is the fact that they do not have stable, secure places to call home. So mural arts came to our team uh, understanding that we had used photo documentation and photo elicitation interviewing to really get it human stories about health, they wanted to use these methods to understand the housing experiences of the youth they serve. So we begin the process by observing not individual human behavior or concerns, but the community context for health. Cameras help with this process because they formalize the process of social observation. So for example, in this particular project, the students we worked with, and this included Penn undergraduates, Penn Master of Public Health students, and high school students, and actually um, GED students in the Mural Arts Mural Corps program. So they selected one aspect of the housing environment in Philadelphia that they wanted to study carefully, and they decided to focus on portals, doorways, and windows, and to do a systematic study. For example, uh, the Penn class chose to document every doorway along Spruce Street from the Delaware River to Cobbs Creek and to try to use a systematic approach so that they could compare on this one street that cuts across very diverse socioeconomic neighborhoods. <clears throat> they wanted to study one feature of housing. And then the students in the Mural Corps program who are high school students and high school dropouts um, also did that process in the environments and communities around their after school programs. So just so that you can see, 
the students were basically taught to follow a protocol of standing uh, directly in front of the doorway as far away from the house um, while remaining on the sidewalk as possible and to take a level photograph basically. There were some other stipulations. But the process taught the students to try to follow a single recipe rather than exercising their creativity in this portion of the project so that they understood the importance of reproducibility in the data gathering process. So using photographs is a very simple way to engage students who have varying levels of skill. I, um, and it's an observation to look, it's an opportunity to look outside oneself and think about the broader social problem of housing. And you can see just in these few photographs the dramatic differences that can be observed and how these photographs then become the basis for conversations back in the classroom about how the context for health varies and how these different housing circumstances might influence health. The next part of the photo documentation process is admittedly my favorite part of the process. And this, in this part, we engage individuals and communities in the discussion about the factors that influence health. And what we do is we give cameras to people in the community, in this case to high-risk youth, and ask them, in this case, what does home mean to you? And in the next few photographs, I'll just show you how this is an invitation into an intimate dialogue between the research team and the participants. Students talked about, the, and now I'm talking about high school students and high school uh, G and GED students, they talked about the insecurity that they experience in their homes, the um, difficult relationships they have with family members, sometimes their parents' successes in maintaining secure homes despite real living in low-income uh, situations. They talked about the centrality of home to their sense of identity. They also talked about the relationships that were most important to them, and in this particular case, this young woman, Adia, talked about how important her relationship is with her boyfriend's grandmother. And Adia speaks only English, the grandmother speaks only Vietnamese, but they um, find a way to convey to each other how important that relationship is in their sense of well-being and happiness in life. Similarly, uh, Pedro talked about his time on the streets and how now having a son has reoriented his life and given him new inspiration uh, to work, uh, to further his education and his opportunities so that he can move to a safer neighborhood. So what happens is these youth bring their photographs into an interview setting. And in this particular project, Anu and the Weigel Information Commons made it possible for these youth to come to the University of Pennsylvania and our team had trained many Penn students and some of the artists from the mural, mural arts program in how to do photo elicitation interviews. We teach them the basics of technology, how to use digital audio recorders, and how to capture good quality sound. But we also use the interview training as an opportunity for professionalism education. We teach the students about the boundaries that need to be respected and observed in an interview setting. We teach them how to ask good questions and listen carefully to the stories that people are telling us. We teach them to view the interview really as a privileged opportunity to view what is most important in another person's life. So here the technology, the camera, and the recorder uh, basically serve as, a, as bridges to understanding other people's life experiences. We also worked closely with a Mantua neighborhood and used some of these techniques to work with residents of this block on Mellon Street that was then transformed using the stories from the photo elicitation interviews to make public art to bring attention to issues of housing insecurity and homelessness. Here, artist er Ernel Martinez works with one of the young people on that street. And I'll just show you quickly how these interviews, which had started with the simple photographs I showed you, um, then were turned into very creative expressions of the meaning of home. So that block was painted by community residents, by Penn students, by members of the mural arts programs team. And this block now looks like this. <laughs> And this house, which had once been a crack house, 
was turned into an art house for the purposes of an exhibit that uh, showcased art about the meaning of home and also showcased the interviews that our students had done in an audio mural produced by WHYY. Just very quickly, I'd like to say that Elizabeth Perez Luna, when we first met with her, said to me, now Carolyn, you're saying interview, interview, interview. You know how to do interviews. You're going to teach them how to do interviews, but this is what I do, and how am I going to use those interviews? And I said, you know, okay, it won't be as high quality as you're accustomed to, but we'll get good stories. And she came to me at the end and she said, I was amazed by the stories these students could draw out and she used them in productions that went on the air and our students were very proud. The youth were very proud to have their stories told and their plights made visible in this way. <coughs> their stories were also turned into a paper sculpture by Ernel Martinez that basically uh, conveyed the central importance of home but also turned these heavy stories into these whimsical patterns on the wallpaper. Um, and then Shira Walensky took the images from the youth photographs and turned them into, I think, very impressive public art reminding us of the central importance of home. Importantly, the block was transformed. I think our students are also transformed by this process. And I think technology in this case really offers just an invitation for our students to be out there in the world. I'd say that the, the tools that we, change, that we use will change and vary, and we will use whatever tools we need. And they can be very simple or they can be complex and high tech, but the purpose is really to use those tools to observe, engage, create, and also enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.